excuse me, sir. I'm a, uh, a medical marijuana patient here in New Jersey. Okay. Where can I go uh, medicate around here? I won't cause a problem for anybody. Uh, well, it can't be on school property. Right, right. So, I don't even know what to tell you. I mean, yeah. Uh, is there a smoking area over in the in, in the municipal no, you can, building? you can't smoke by the town. Okay. And all that, so I really don't know. Okay. Is there a public area? What, what's that over there? Is That's that a private business, yeah. Oh, so I could probably go over there on the sidewalk, I guess. Yeah, but as long as you're not on school property. Right, thing, yeah. You there's no smoking in yep. this area. And that includes the sidewalk, too, right? If there's, well, there's no sidewalk here, so. Yeah, there's no sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Side, okay. Yeah. But yeah, you, can just, you just can't be on school property. Right, okay. Yes, sir. You Thank it. you, sir. I appreciate it. Okay, the officer said I could smoke my cannabis over there, and uh, I guess I'm going to go across the street over there to that business and smoke my medical marijuana. Let me just make sure that these other police know that I'm going over there, and so I won't cause a problem. But I think it's best to let the police know because I'm going to actually be upwind of them. So let me let them know. Let me find a sergeant or somebody who's in charge, and let them know that I'll be smoking my medical marijuana across the street. Hi, gentlemen. Uh, excuse me, I'm a medical marijuana patient, and I was just wondering if it's okay if I go across the street there and medicate. You know, we were medicate. just talking about that. As long as it's not on school right. grounds, that's, we can't have it in school grounds or uh, township yep. grounds. Yeah. So. so just across the street, that's all right? Should be, should be, be good. You should I'm be just fine. making so sure. It's school right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all right. it. Have a good day. Do you smell my medical marijuana? You smell my medical marijuana, don't you? I think he smells my medical marijuana. Sorry. Hey, this is Lefty. I'm here at the Chris Christie town meeting. The police told me I could smoke marijuana across the street from the town meeting on the public property. And that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I don't have a, um, a picnic blanket or a banner, but I do have the attorney general guidelines. And I will be medicating here on the guidelines. The state police over here. State police over there. I got my Kuma guidelines. I got my medical marijuana in its proper receptacle. And I'm gonna smoke marijuana. There we go. Happy medicating to me. Even though I can't share with other patients, it's nice to have somebody here with me enjoying this experience. Because right now, I'm experiencing freedom all by myself, and I know there's a lot of you out there that wish you could experience this freedom with us. Just come out to one of Chris Christie's town meetings or one of our Ignorance is No Excuse Tour locations. We'll be doing every police station in New Jersey. We're gonna be doing DARPA. We're gonna be doing uh, maybe some churches, maybe some hospitals, we don't know. We're just gonna do what we can and we're very much against doing nothing. So whatever we're gonna do, we're gonna do something. I found I have something to offer this movement, and I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. You really come equipped, though, huh? Well, yeah. You here for some cause? Oh, are you with um, the medical marijuana? Yes. Stuff? That's yes. cool, man. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. You guys, I heard you guys show up to these things. We've been around? trying. We did like seven in a row. This was seven going? in a row. So far, that we got a couple of uh, patients, uh, mothers, to ask questions. There was yeah. a, a mother whose uh, one son has four. He has, he has Dravet syndrome. He has seizures. Does it help with that? And yeah, it help, absolutely helps. Are you a medical marijuana patient? Yeah. Yourself? Yeah. So how, what do you have? Yeah, I have a uh, spine full of titanium. I just showed the officer my, my a card. Spine full of titanium. A spine full of titanium? Yeah, it's horrible. This is my card. So does it actually help you? Yeah, I've absolutely. I've never even seen one of these. I was on Oxycontin and Roxycodone for so 10 years. So why be on narcotics? Yeah, can just... I don't take anything anymore. For you 10 years. Sir? Yeah, 10 years. I was on 90 milligrams every three hours was my oh prescription. My God. That's a lot. Did you get hurt or something? Yeah, I fell on the job. Oh. I hurt myself. Yeah, so I have an I artificial... I've never even seen one of these. Yeah, I have an artificial disc. I have fusion. I have horrible sciatic pain in my, my leg. Now, um, what are you allowed to do? Like, uh, 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 what, what, what form do you ingest it in? I like to smoke it. Do you? Why? Is it, is it quicker? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's immediate. Points, we're going to be opening up now, so uh, immediate start. And then... Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, they give it, is, it, is it up to the patient how they ingest it? Yeah. What forms are there? Um, well, they have to actually make their own oil if they want to make oil. How do you make oil? Um, you have to take Everclear or 100% uh, or 99% alcohol, alcohol and then mix it with the uh, cannabis. And the, the THC and the CBD all comes out of that into the alcohol. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then what do you do? Do you and then you, get or add it you, to you it? Can, you can use it as tincture, which a lot of uh, multiple sclerosis patients use it under their tongue. Interesting. Some yeah. Huh? Yeah, because I know some, one lady, she couldn't even move her arms she, her, from MS. Her arms were like this. They're rigid. Right here, Mrs. Endelon, right after this jump. And her husband would give her some tincture, and she was able to 
move her arms like that. And now what I'm seeing with these epileptic kids, it's like immediate. They're, they're not, not really seizing anymore. It's amazing. Now, what are the laws regarding you possessing it? I can possess it anywhere. The, the but is it just like regular prescription medication? You can only have a certain amount. Like right. You, you, have, to you, have, with you have to have it in the... Uh, in the container, you have to have it in the approved right, container. Line, okay. yeah. yeah, it has to be, and it's all barcoded. It has. Um, so it has your name on it. Has so my, a prescription. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just carry a joint around with you. You right, have to right, have it. Right, right. Like you can't carry a pill around with you. You have to have. Right, you have to have a prescription. Well, you can. You can carry four or fewer doses. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting, huh? What, you, you getting getting a hard time from uh, cops and stuff or not? Two police stations gave us a hard time. Well, let me ask you a question. Like, I mean, you're not dumb about it. Though. Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna medicate, you're not gonna do it. Like. Out in the mall. Well, no, that's what we're going to. We're going to police first and asking them where can we go medicate. And some some police are like, oh yeah, grab out a flagpole, go right, right over here because I carry the Kuma guidelines with oh, you me. Mean today? Uh, like in general, in general, like I carry these guidelines. Did you? Did your department ever get these? I have no idea, man. I, I know we're. This is kind of new to us. So yeah, saying, yeah. To law enforcement, you know. That's what they're saying. Um, and some guys are like, oh yeah, go right over here. And then in Bayonne, you ran to the the cop didn't even want to look at the guidelines. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I don't care. I'm gonna arrest you if you even have it on you. Let the uh, judge figure it out. I'm yeah. like, wow, okay. Yeah, well, some of the bigger cities don't, don't deal with that. Yeah, and I grew up in Bayonne. Hey, wait, there was three joints in here when I turned around. There's only two in here now. I'm just kidding. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Well, that joke didn't go over too well. Where are you from? I am uh, supporting the kids with epilepsy that oh. need medical marijuana. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you want to try that with her? Because she has a severe seizure disorder. She has seizures. Oh, yeah. So she, she can't. Oh, does she qualify for medical marijuana? Um, well, I can't find a doctor. You can't find a doctor? No. Where, where do you live? Um, Sussex County. Sussex County. I'm sure there are doctors in Sussex. Um, Have you looked at the list? I've gone to University Hospital. What is it? Newark University Oh, no, Hospital. I'm sorry. Newark, yeah. And um, the doctor that I, I went to for years, Dr. Pack, she'll no longer see her because she turned 21. So I went to the, the adult doctor, Dr. Marks. Right. He doesn't believe in it. That's what the problem is, finding a neurologist that believes in it. And then there are so many issues you have to deal with. You have to be going to that neurologist for two years. You have to go through Well, yeah. They're all different. Everybody's different. My doctor wanted me to see her for a year. Yeah. But some doctors will do it after one appointment. Really? So all the doctors are different. My friend's doctor charges uh, gets, uh, Medicare co-pays. My, I pay $400 cash. It's 400 cash. Nobody pays as much as me. There's no patients that pay what I do. Yeah. So hopefully you can find... I'm changing doctors to uh, Walter Hussar in Rockaway. I don't know how close that is Rockaway? to you. Rockaway? Rockaway, oh, yeah. Okay, I know where Rockaway is. Um, yeah. He, sound, he seems to be pretty good. He's a neurologist, too. Really? And that's where I'm going to start going, yeah. I hope. Rockaway's closer than New York to me. Yeah. Can I get his, num his name? I don't have his name. Uh, what is he? Walter Hussar. H-U-S-A-R. Hussar. Hussar, okay. yeah. Uh, I f he's in um, Rockaway. I forget the name of his, his um, practice, though. Uh, uh, but he's, he's a neurologist. If you go on the website, the New Jersey website for uh, Department of Health, yeah. look on the medical marijuana, list and it yeah. shows you the doctors yeah 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 good um, luck yeah because i've tried she's been on every medication see what happened and this is what gets me going the state mandates that we give our children the immunizations my daughter was born perfectly healthy she got a dpt the day of the dpt she had 20 seizures the pertussis caused encephalitis then the doctor's office lost the charts they lost the charts. They lost the charts for two years. For two years, and they found them. After statute of limitation, the charts were found. And how convenient! For, for five years, I fought it, and then I said, you know what? All my time and energy is going fighting these people when it needs to be focused on her and taking care of her. So, um, I've she's been on every medication that there is, experimental yeah. from Canada. I've done a holistic healing with light, healing with colors, sounds, um, acupuncture. I've tried everything. What drugs? Like Anfi? Uh... Uh, she just came off of Anfi because they gave me such a hard time about getting it that she went 10 days without it. And I'm like, well, if she went 10 days without it and it hasn't changed her seizures anyway, what's the sense of keeping on it? Yeah. But um, Trileptol, uh, 
Oh. Everyone. Yeah, that's that's all the drugs and the, the drugs, the side effects are worse than the drugs themselves. They're horrible. The, the side effects actually, I mean, made her slow her down even more. Yeah. The seizures do a lot of damage and the drugs do have slowed her down. Yeah. She's had brain surgery. Oh my god. Um, we had the left side and the right side divided to try to stop the seizures and seizures came back. She was one of the first children to have a vagus nerve stimulator in Okay, planning. yeah. Um, we just had the battery. Um, we had the battery changed in uh, June, oh July this God. year, last year. Um, she does seizures every day. Every day she has at least At least one? Um, at least one, sometimes three. Um, How long? They're all, they're all big. They're not just like little seizures. Right. We're talking sometimes up to eight minutes. Wow. Can she walk at all or no? She does. She does. She, she have drops easily? She, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's broken her elbow twice, her tit, her, her nose once, her wow. right tooth is chipped. Wow. So, what I do is I wear a helmet with yeah. a face guard. I bought a, a hockey. You know, when they play hockey the best, I put one of those on her. Elbow pads, knee pads. She looks like, the, she looks like a stormtrooper. But, but it's she's safe, safe. Yeah. and it, like, it gives her a little bit of that independence because she likes to get up and walk around. And I don't blame her. Toys. I don't blame her. But um, I would, I would love to. Uh, she's to me, she's a candidate for it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen kids turn around on, on medical marijuana, and after being on all those drugs that you just mentioned. And I mean, to me, I would love to get her off those drugs. You know, I really would. How old is she? Twenty-one. She's twenty-one. What's her name? Sarah. Sarah, do you go on the website at all for CMMNJ? I may have. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of looking lately. Yeah, there's a lot of patients on there you can connect with and a lot of parents that are going through the same exact thing you're going through. And Actually, uh, Paula, uh, she was right there. Paula lost her daughter. Her daughter was 15 months old, Sabina Rose. She had a 25-hour seizure and she died. So that's why Paula's here. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, because these restrictions are killing kids now. Yes. And they are. What's the point? Not only, and then there's only one place you can get it. I think it's Montclair. Um, uh, Woodbridge. Woodbridge? Oh, it's Woodbridge now? I thought it was Montclair. Montclair's only open one day a month. So that's not really helpful. <laughs> there, there are a lot of, there, there's, I guess that's kind of why I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with other issues like placement for her. Yeah. So I can continue to work. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's important. I, 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 can, I know what your parents go through because I've seen what uh, Vivian Wilson's parents go through and, and her and. I, it's, it's crazy. I've literally driven, when I went to a state budget meeting, I told them, she started to see me say, I live in Sussex County, which I don't know if you know where that's at, it's Rockaways. Yeah. She started the CP Center in Clifton, down here, in 2005. I have driven this child to school and back home and then come back down to pick her up and go back home. 160 miles a day since 2004. That's nine years of 160 miles a day. Yeah. Just to make sure she's in a good school. Yeah. What does that say? That says that we don't have enough out there. Yeah. There's not enough programs. I'm a, I'm a consistory in Morris County. Oh, How are you? Yes. Hi, yes. Yes, I met you before. Yes. Can I ask you a question? I'm a medical marijuana patient in New Jersey. Can I ask you why you voted no on the medical marijuana bill? I voted no. Uh, let me... Let me... Uh, there was a couple of them, I think. Uh, the, the, for 13 years and younger, I voted yes. Um, uh, I, I'd have to go back to understand. Certainly, there's a reason. I believe it was because it wasn't laid out properly enough and I knew there was going to be a lot of problems yeah. in implementing it and getting it out there the way it should. I felt that the bill was premature in the sense that it should be developed more. And, and that was something I just even spoke to Jay about and the governor touched on the, for the children under 13 years of age. And he brought up hospitals. Why? 
isn't the hospitals that have, like Marshtown Memorial, a, a great children's center, not equipped to take the application process along with dispensing the drugs for children to expedite it. And these are things that happen. And as a legislator, and I see this more and more in bills, people try to do bills that make them feel good, feel good bills, yeah. but they're not being, they're not developed well enough to take the kinks and the problems out of it. Well, for example, last year, uh, Governor Christie vetoed the edibles bill. That little girl, those girls are 21 years old. How are they going to smoke marijuana? That, that's really? why they need the... Um, they need the edibles. The, the edibles. They and I did need. vote yes on that. Oh, I, you did? Okay. Yes, on Excellent. that I did. Excellent. And I, and I, you know, feel that the governor did touch on something, talking yeah. about the hospitals. Yeah. My partner in the assembly, Jay... Yes, Jay Weber, I, yes. I leaned over to Jay and yeah. I said, I believe that's something we should look at, is yeah. to do the application process and the dispensing process through a hospital like Marstown Memorial that People has think a big we know children's other. center. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that has a big children's center. So, you know, that's why. That's why the initial time I did, because I thought there was too much not place to implement it properly for the public. Yeah. You know, to get it out there. And we do that too often. I mean, and the legislature does. I try not to. You know, I came out of working in local government. I was in local government for 27 years, so I'm used to working one-on-one -on -one with the people. So certain things I see, you know, Trenton sometimes is up here, and the people are down here, and there's a gap. And, and when I see that, I'm not going to vote for something. More than likely, I should abstain if I agree with something, but I see something wrong with it. But sometimes you'll see me abstain because I know the governor's going to come back with the CV. And I've been criticized for that. But I'm like, no, I'm not going to vote no Wait, until I know. You, what's your name? Betty Lou. All right. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm like, I know you're in a so many Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. yes. Morris County. Of course, Symphony. Yeah. You live in Pacon. I was the municipal clerk in Roxbury for 25 years. Okay. I went to Roxbury High School. So I came out of Roxbury in 2010. The governor appointed me as his deputy commissioner for DCA. And my husband was the Republican leader that died in the state house. So in 2012. So I left the governor and ran for the seat. But as I say to people, I'm a legislator that came from the inside out is a big difference coming from the outside in. Because I know, because I've worked with the people all my life. Yeah. My career, I should say, not my life. Yes, yeah, I'm here for, for, like, when I hear her story, her story is so tragic. But, you know, I, I mean, mean and, I, and I get what the governor says about, especially for the children. I think the hospitals, that shouldn't be a hard pull to do that for the children. When your child is sick, you don't care where it's available. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I don't care if they said, you have to go to Lefty's house. I'd be like, that's fine. Right. I'll go to his house yeah. in his garage. Just let me get it. Yeah. But you, um, I don't know who she is. Do you have any... about the process through the application process and the dispensing process for the children coming to hospitals. And, that, and, and, and not for anything, he said he would go in that direction, didn't he? The moms that have children in the dispensaries, they're afraid to say anything because the dispensary owners some of them are crooks and they're afraid that they won't be served. I'm not you don't, so you're not. Right. So, you, you asked for Erica? And, and then Eric will set up an appointment. Uh, and, and I think that's an area that can be worked on. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. No problem. Go ahead. Something in. Bye-bye. Uh, I'm one of your constituents hey. in East Hanover. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Good. Uh, I wish East Hanover were still in Well, district. yeah, yeah, it's actually, yeah, not anymore. Once a constituent, always. Yeah, yeah, I support you. Um, I did, now, you voted yes on the medical marijuana bills, or did you abstain? I'm not even well, sure anymore. I forget. And I would have to check, because there have been several. Okay. I, was, I voted no on the first bill. Uh, 2010? Uh, right, January of right. 10, right before the, because I thought it was just, it was rushed and. And I, I've liked what the governor's done in terms of some of the um, safeguards and the checks that he's put in. Which, so I'm, I'm much more comfortable with it than I was. And uh, I vote. And I think this summer I voted yes. I'd have to double check. But I think I voted yes for the edibles for the kids. What safeguards did you? Uh, well, just the 
as I recall, it, it was kind of slowing down, making sure we had the, the uh, physician verifications and making sure it was a medical program. Right. Like, I, I have no problem with it. If it like, the difference between marijuana and Oxycontin or codeine. Or, I mean, if a physician, a responsible physician, is willing to put their license on the line to say this is medically appropriate for someone, sure. I'm okay with that. I was... I, frankly, I didn't trust the people who were pushing it in January 2010, so I was admittedly slow. Okay. I said, I'm just not comfortable with it. Yes. Yeah. But um, I'm comfortable with something that I feel like is treated the same way as something that uh, is, you know, any other narcotic you know, right. kind of thing. And and I don't have a problem with going a little slower on the marijuana because it's so easily abused. We've seen other states where they just it's just an easy end around. So I have no problem saying, hey, okay, yeah, it's like any other drug where we're gonna be we're gonna be doubly sure. Or especially when you're talking about kids like involving a psychiatrist I think it's appropriate. But I, I, this family um, is uh, uh, Sabina Rose? Yeah, the last name is uh, uh, fi- uh, Joanna. Right, right, that's a first name analyst. Yeah. They're in my district and they've asked for me and we're gonna meet with them. Uh, stuff like that is it's terribly tragic. hard for it, Yeah, and for kids with lozenges, I, as long as it's medically appropriate and approved, I have no See, as, as it is now, it's easy for her to get Onfi and Valium and Oxycontin. Yeah. They can have that within a half hour. But yeah. the drug that would save her life, she waited a quarter of her life. She was 15 months old. She waited four months. I, know. I don't. Like I mean, that's, that's horrible. The uh, commissioner of health was coming for the budget committee. Oh, on uh, Monday, and uh, I sit on the budget committee. And I, I will even speak to her about it publicly or privately, but um, that, that shouldn't happen. We, no. should, we should have the ability to get them. If you're going to do it, don't play. Kids shouldn't be dying. Yeah. I, mean, I can tell you, I could sit here for an hour telling you all the things that are wrong with the program, yeah. but for these kids to be suffering and dying, I, that's it. Because I, I could be home watching Barefoot Contessa right now. Yeah. I don't need to be here. I got horrible sciatic pain. Yeah. I could be so home yeah. and when I call. Yeah. I, I, I've, got, it's horrible. I've got six kids. I got one on the left. Wow, we'll have an earth. Thank you. But I would have an earth to make sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, so I, I wouldn't want to see it. Yeah. I mean, I was on OxyContin for 10 years. My doctors, I have a spine full of titanium. I was on OxyContin or Oxycodone. My Oxycodone prescription was 90 milligrams every three hours. That's a lot. Sounds like a lot. That's a lot. No doctor would say. Yeah, like that's a lot. And now I take medical marijuana. I don't take any pills Do anymore. Zero. Hey, I got a card. I got a medical marijuana card. Wait, it's working so, out. Do you smoke it? Do you, do you just I smoke it. it? Yeah, I smoke it. One a day? I smoke about, um, well, I brought with me two joints. So this is what I use for the day. That'll, that'll be enough for me for the whole so day. So two, day, two a day? Yeah, just about. Because yeah, I take two hits and I'm good. That's, that's all I need. Um, but when I took Oxycontin, I took it every three hours. So it's basically, I take two hits every, sorry, it's not. Every three hours. Well, I, like, I, well, I, haven't, I haven't smelled that in a while. <laughs> in college. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, it's helped me a lot. Yeah. And it got me off all those pills. So, you know. I don't dispute it. But I'm happy you're uh, you're on board at least a little bit. And maybe no, no, can, no, I, I don't yeah. want to seem to say a little bit. You know, you know, I really want to be careful and responsible. With it. So yeah. I, I'm, I, I might be uh, taking it slower than some people would appreciate, but I'm not I'm not trying to stop it. Certainly don't want to. Yeah, as long as that's not happening. I mean, at least stop that from happening. Yeah. I mean, that's the main thing. What's your name? My name's Lefty. Lefty Grimes. All right, Lefty. Nice Chris Christie. Dale Lazarovich from North Caldwell. I met you at a town hall meeting in Caldwell a couple years ago. We discussed college oh. tuition in New Jersey. Yep. So, um, keep going. Okay. That's how I'm here. First of all, I do love you. Thank you. I'm one of your biggest fans. I love you back. From Columbia High School. All right. Rah, rah. Rah, rah. Okay, so this is a parent to parent. Okay. Last year, two of my children were diagnosed with Crohn's disease. We have, they're, now they're healthy. We've opted not to take the traditional medicine route because it's horrible. I'm begging you to think and reconsider medical marijuana. I, reconsider it in what way? Well, that we went, we tried to go the traditional way. We have not, not done anything yet. But because they're under 18, we had to go to three doctors and go to a psychiatrist and put on a waiting list. And you know what, by the time we got through with that everything. It was going to cost us an absolute fortune. We then thought possibly to go to Colorado. The funny thing is, you can't bring it back without being arrested in North Airport. So, I'm asking, I know that it's, it's up for conversation. 
it's not to be used recreationally. It's grown without THC. It would help my kids. Yeah, listen, first off, as you know, the only way to really keep this a medically based program is to make sure we involve physicians. And not to just have one physician, because unfortunately, you know, one physician, um, as we've seen in some other instances, whether it's concerning medical marijuana in other states, or whether it's concerning um, prescription painkillers, we have a real problem in the state, in this country, of physicians prescribing these things when they're not really necessary. So the idea between the idea behind having a confirming physician on it is to make sure that we don't create these mills in the state where people just go and the doctor winks and nods and looks the other way because he or she is making money and gives it to people who are not using it for medical purposes but are using it in fact for recreational purposes. So the idea behind the way we structure the program is to make it truly medical. Now part of the problem with folks underneath the age of 18 has been that we didn't up until this past summer permit the, an edible form of marijuana to be used. I negotiated with the legislature last year. We've now permitted, starting last summer, an edible form of this. Now, part of the problem is that the folks who run these clinics in the state um, are only going to produce those things where they think they can make money. And so the demand overall for medical marijuana in the state has not been nearly as large as people thought it was going to be, and for the edibles, even less. So the question is going to become, what do we do now for the small group in the population who actually needs this. That's why I suggested in the beginning that we make it a hospital-based program so that we take kind of the, the profit motive out of it. Um, that was not something that was acceptable um, to the state legislature. So we'll continue to talk about it. But here's what I tell you what I won't do. Because there's bills in the legislature now to legalize marijuana entirely, to legalize it for recreational use. I don't know what the difference is between legalizing it and legalizing it for recreational use, but there's differences, apparently. And people who want to decriminalize marijuana. I'm not gonna do that on my watch, just not. I don't think it's the right thing to do for our state. If you see what's going on in Colorado and California, you have people that are flying in to Stapleton Airport in Denver, driving into the city of Denver, and coming there with um, health problems. And they go to see a physician before under the medical program and got prescriptions. Now, the recreation use is available. People are just going into Denver just to get high. Um, they're, they're already a mile high. I don't know exactly why they need to get higher, but apparently they do. And so I'm not going to turn New Jersey into that. So what we'll continue to do, and, and I had a question about this at my last town hall meeting, we're going to continue to work with parents to see ways that we can make sure that we appropriately in a medically-based program deal with minors. And I think that the problem that we're having now is that there's just not enough demand for it, so they're not producing it. So it's making it harder and harder for you to get the, get the product, because that's what you're on the waiting list for, is to get the product. And I don't know if what we're going to have to do ultimately is force these folks as, as part of their license to produce this, even though they won't make a profit off of it. But that's all stuff that we can have conversations with the legislature about as we move forward. But what I'm not going to do is, in reaction to that, broaden the program so greatly that we wind up having a recreational use program in the state. I don't think it's good for our families. I don't think it's good for our state. And I have some people who are saying that you should do it just to tax it and make money. You know, I don't think that's where we need to go as a society. Um, and, and it's not something that I'm gonna do. I've been pretty clear about this when I ran in 09 and when I ran again in 13, that if we're gonna have a medical marijuana program in the state, that it's gonna be very narrow and medically based. But I showed last summer that I was willing to change and tweak it if people came to me with evidence that a certain part of the population was being unserved or underserved. So we'll continue to work with folks like you. Um, Nick will give you his card, send your information so we can have a member of my policy staff call you and talk about your particular issue and see if we can fix it through the administration. If we can't, then it'll be part of our overall discussions as we're discussing this issue again with the legislature going forward. But I wanna be clear with everybody. Um, I'm not, as long as I'm governor, gonna permit decriminalization or recreational use of marijuana in our state. I don't think it's appropriate, um, and, and I won't do it. And if you want someone to do it, you're gonna have to elect a different governor, because I'm not going to. But thank you for raising the issue, I appreciate it. Right. Yeah, listen, and, and, and my point to you is that I don't think it's the parents who are advocating 
for legalization. Um, what happens is people who want legalization for other reasons use cases like yours as an excuse to advocate for legalization. Not the particular parents, but others who are just advocates for legalization use this as an example for why we should just legalize it so we don't have to worry about it. So these parents can have access to it. And they're not really advocating for you, they're advocating for themselves, but they use you guys as a front. So I've spoken to enough parents who are in a situation similar to yours with different diseases as well, that I know that there's, this is an issue we gotta try to figure out. But I wanna make sure I figure it out in a way where it's narrow and we do it the right way and we don't hurt other folks. Thank you, all right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Paula Joanna. Um, I, I imagine you might, my daughter's name might ring a bell with you. Her name is Sabina Rose. Go ahead. This is your second. You need to speak about, you won't expand about a few more words from her. She agreed to allow you to do that. I took my baby off her ventilator. She died from the gray syndrome. She had a 24 hour seizure. This is what happens when you don't get the proper medical marijuana program installed in the state. You mentioned before that maybe you have to force these dispensaries to, to provide it, and that's exactly what you need to do. Listen, well, so first of all, let me say yes, I do know your daughter's name, and I'm horribly sorry, horribly sorry for what's happened to your daughter. Um, and this program, as it was put together when it was originally sent to me, didn't provide for what you're talking about. We then changed it to allow edibles to come in last year, in the summer. We had no way of knowing that they would not produce the edibles. So I'm saying to you now what I said to the woman over there. As we see problems in the program, we'll try to fix it. But the bill that was sent to me by Governor Corzine on the day of my inauguration, didn't provide for this. We then saw the problem, worked with the legislature, we compromised, we authorized edibles for minors. Now we're finding that dispensaries are not producing the edibles because they don't make a profit for them, because there's not enough of a demand. So now we have to go back and see, do we have to, in fact, as a, as a condition of the license, force them to do it. But every time we do this, just understand that every time we do this, it makes it less and less likely that these people want to be in business because they're in business to make money. And that's why I originally urged a hospital-based program, which was not authorized in the bill that the legislature approved. So we're continuing to try to help to figure this out. Uh, I didn't think you're gonna to have to force people to produce something. Now, we're seeing that we may have to. But understand that if we do that, the reaction that may be that some of them may decide to close if it's not profitable. So I completely sympathize with you. I can't possibly imagine what you're going through as a parent of four. I can't imagine it, to feel helpless to help your child. And I'm trying to get to a place where we can do this. But if I legalized marijuana tomorrow, that wouldn't make there be edibles. If I did, but I'm trying to figure out a problem to fix it in a way that will actually bring help to children who are having the suffering that your child had. I did a lot of my own research with my husband. We've, we've talked to dispensary owners. We know what works and what doesn't. Do my daughter, who started the process of getting her medical marijuana card in August, she still didn't have it in November because of all the roadblocks. I put her to bed one night and she never woke up. She suffered a 24-hour seizure. The day that I put her to bed was the day her application was submitted. The doctors on the medical marijuana program need to be trained. Some of them don't even, shouldn't even be on that list. Like the things that we went through to try to get my, my girl this car. It, was, it, was, it took so long and she ran out of time. I have a five-month-old son. Going to the ICU, she was put in a coma. She was, she was, for five days, I had a two-month-old baby. Whoa. So my life is so difficult because I don't have her. And, and it could be easily solved. 
my husband and I know many solutions. We have great suggestions. Well, I call cool. your office mm -hmm. constantly, and I don't get any response. I deserve an hour of your time one-on-one. -on -one. Well, an hour of my time one-on-one -on -one would do good. An hour, an hour if, if I thought that giving you an hour of my time one-on-one -on -one would solve this problem all by itself, I'd give it to you. It wouldn't, but fact it would is, make my husband and I feel better. I voted for you twice. I lived here my whole life. My daughter's only been to the shore once. She's only been to a park once. She had one birthday party, one Christmas. One. I, I understand, and I know. And we're trying to fix the problem. And we will sit down with you and work with you to get your suggestions like we're getting from lots of parents who are in your situation, who my staff has met with and has taken suggestions from. Um, but the one thing I would respectfully disagree with you about is that if the problem was easy to solve, it would be solved. And it's not easy to solve. I understand, but, 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 I, I, but I want you to know that people hear it that way. And so let's work together to try to solve it. And it'll be Gene Ashmore, who's right over standing up against the wall there, who's the head of my constituent relations. We'll set up time for you to come down, sit with us, tell us about your experience, and we'll try to work with the legislature to fix the problem. Um, but this is what happens, and, and this is not your problem, but you're suffering from it. When a bill gets passed, on the day before the new governor's being sworn in, gets signed into law in the middle of the night, nobody thinks about what the effects are going to be of it. They don't think it through, they just go ahead and do it. And so I'm left to fix that problem. I'm going to fix the problem. We've made it better than it was before. And if there's ways that you could show us I can make it better, as long as it stays as a medically based program, I don't have any objection to it. When I say I'm not going to expand marijuana in the state so that you're clear about this, what I mean is I'm not going to decriminalize or legalize. But I have said and I proved last summer that if there are changes that need to be made that will help to get people who are truly sick care that they need, I'm open to making those changes. But what I fear is that a lot of people, not you, but folks who are advocates, as I said to the woman before, use really tragic circumstances as an excuse to say, well, let's just legalize. So I've got to walk that line, but I'm ready to walk that line with you. And I wish that what had happened to you hadn't happened. I can't prevent it, but we're going to try to make sure that it doesn't happen to you or to anybody else again, and we'll continue to work with you on it.